The Resident Evil franchise is currently bigger than ever before, with the recent remake of Resident Evil 4 and a very successful release of Resident Evil 8 Village before that. It feels like Capcom can do no wrong with this action horror behemoth. But what if I told you that even with its long-standing legacy, this franchise was on the verge of extinction just 7 years ago? Well if you're having doubts about that, stay tuned because given the fact that Halloween is fast approaching, I figured it was a great time to revisit Resident Evil 7 Biohazard and talk about how it saved the Resident Evil franchise. So I'm only 26 years old, and being 26 my first experience with Resident Evil was actually playing Resident Evil 4 on a friend's GameCube over 15 years ago. Given my age and the fact that I never played any Resident Evil games before that, I was beyond impressed by what Resident Evil 4 brought to the table. And when we look back at the legacy of Resident Evil 4 today, it's many people's favorite game in the series. But what if I told you that it was the beginning of the near downfall of the franchise? Well you might be wondering how a game with such a strong legacy that released to near perfect reviews could be the downfall of a franchise. But it wasn't because the game was not good. A lot of fans of Resident Evil 1, 2, and 3 were extremely disappointed by Resident Evil 4's shift from a terrifying survival horror game to a third person action shooter with some horror elements. Well looking back at it now you can easily make the argument that Resident Evil 4 is one of the most influential games of all time and without it we probably wouldn't have over the shoulder shooters like Gears of War and The Last of Us. However, at the time, those fans of the first three games were worried that Resident Evil 4 lost touch of what made Resident Evil such a great game in the first place. Though quite dated by today's standards, the first three games in the series are strictly survival horror games with a lot less action. Now I believe this is because of the hardware limitations of the PlayStation 1, which required all of those games to have fixed cameras. And with these fixed cameras and a lack of a modern controller, navigating combat can be extremely difficult. This means that Resident Evil 1, 2, and 3 all focused heavily on managing resources and avoiding combat when possible. While resource management is still somewhat important in Resident Evil 4, once you master the controls it's fairly easy to just fly through the game landing headshots on everyone. Combine this with the fact that you can upgrade your weapons to the point of feeling tanky, and you have a recipe for a solid action game with some small horror elements rather than the other way around. While the near perfect reception of Resident Evil 4 may have felt like it proved those old school fans wrong, unfortunately the next few mainline releases showed that they were in fact correct. With the release of Resident Evil 5, it was clear that this franchise was struggling to maintain its identity, as this game is strictly a co-op third person shooter without any real horror elements. And to clarify, I think Resident Evil 5 is a good game, albeit not very memorable. I just don't think it was a good Resident Evil game. Unfortunately the same can't be said about Resident Evil 6. Resident Evil 6 was a game that almost single-handedly killed the franchise. With Resident Evil 5 still receiving generally solid feedback, a lot of people began speculating about which direction the series would go in with the inevitable release of Resident Evil 6. Unfortunately for some of those who were hoping for a return to its roots, Resident Evil 6 was even deeper into this weird cheesy action game genre Capcom seemed to be going for, and it became the first mainline Resident Evil game to receive mostly negative reviews upon launch. While Capcom's ambition here can't be denied and can almost be seen as admirable, the game ended up feeling like watching a convoluted action movie. On top of this, Resident Evil 6 faced a lot of controversy upon release with the discovery of data on the disc behind a paywall that was going to be available via paid DLC. So after the radical shift in genres, struggling to find its identity, and the on-disc downloadable content controversy, it really felt like Resident Evil 6 was the true death of this franchise. And this led to one of the longest gaps between mainline releases we've seen with the series. However, Resident Evil's long-awaited return was a triumphant one, with the terrifying release of Resident Evil 7 Biohazard in 2017. Resident Evil 7 is exactly what longtime fans of the series wanted, a return to genuine horror with some modern action elements. The third person over the shoulder camera was ditched in favor of a first person view, solidifying the immersion that this game brought. By this point you probably somewhat already know the plot, but to summarize, you play as a new character to the series named Ethan Winters, who finds himself searching an abandoned estate for his wife Mia. The Baker family, who owns the abandoned estate, ends up capturing Ethan, leading you to being locked up in their house and witnessing some of the craziest stuff I have ever seen in a video game. Now I'm not going to go over the entire plot as I think you should visit this game yourself if you haven't already, but the horror elements really carry on throughout the entire game with the only somewhat weak point being the last chapter. 
and that last chapter while being a little bit subpar is rectified with multiple choices and a proper resolution that ties you back to Chris Redfield from the original Resident Evil. So just how did Resident Evil 7 Biohazard save the franchise? Well it wasn't just this excellent game returning to its horror form. Resident Evil 7 was the first game to use Capcom's in-house RE engine. The game was praised for its graphics and solid responsive feeling controls, and the success of it also proved the success of the RE engine. Capcom took advantage of this by using that same engine when developing the also very successful Resident Evil 8 Village, and the remake of classics Resident Evil 2, 3, and 4. Doing this led to those older titles being brought up to modern standards, and all of those remakes were extremely well received upon release. What I like most about all of these remakes is they were clearly done with the longtime fans in mind. Though heavily improved, they do stay pretty true to the source material, making it not feel like a quick cash grab. So what's next for the Resident Evil franchise? Well, the remake of Resident Evil 4 came out just earlier this year to near perfect reviews across the board, and it's actually in Game of the Year contention. Resident Evil 8 Village is still flying high from the release of its downloadable content, featuring a third person mode. So honestly, Capcom has a lot of potential options here. If they choose to release Resident Evil 9 as sort of a trilogy with 7 and 8, it's likely to do very well. And if they do take the remake route, I would love to see a version of the first Resident Evil without a fixed camera. But whatever they choose to do, let's just hope it's not a step backwards with a remake of 5 and 6, as maybe some things are better left as a reminder of how close this now healthy franchise once was to being completely destroyed. Thank you all so much for watching, Halloween is my favorite holiday so I wanted to take advantage of that and talk about a nice spooky game here. Comment down below letting me know what you think is next for the franchise, and be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more retrospectives and gaming news. I also want to mention that once in a blue moon I will be streaming here on YouTube, and I do plan on having at least one Resident Evil 4 stream between now and Halloween, so be sure to be on the lookout for that. As always, take care guys and I will see you in the next one.